Live. Now, here's your host, Dan Celia. Welcome back. American Family Radio Network Financial Issues. I'm Dan Celia. It's great to be here. And we are live still. We're in Tyler, Texas, but I'm heading out here, going up to Oklahoma City uh, for a uh, program tonight, Give Me Liberty Tour in Oklahoma City, there on uh, Northwest West Street in Oklahoma City. And that starts at 630 tonight. I hope I get to meet as many of uh, my listeners that are coming out. I know there are, are an awful lot coming out. I've been getting some emails. So um, looking forward to that. And then uh, headed home tomorrow. So uh, it's always fun being on the road. And it's always uh, a little bit interesting when we have all these technical kinds of things going on. So hoping uh, for a better day. A lot of the technical issues you guys don't even know. We just are str- we just stress over it. But um, anyway. Looking forward to that tonight in Oklahoma City and uh, having a, a meeting t- a Saturday morning in Oklahoma City as well, and then we're going to move on. Um, and had some uh, great time here in Tyler, Texas uh, for the last couple of days, so I appreciate that. You're listening to Financial Issues. We're going to try to get to calls early. It's Friday, folks. Friday, we try to do a rapid-fire Friday, and I say we try. It's usually my fault, not your fault. I'm going to try to do a better job of that this morning. Because I'm getting inundated with emails once again. I think I might have had a record day yesterday. I'm not sure what I was talking about. I'm not sure what was happening. I just saw the number of emails, and I think I might have had a record number. I haven't, I haven't looked at many of them. So, you know, I'm not going to answer. I'm just not. I'm just going to be real honest. I'm not going to get to all these emails. Uh, when I travel, I get behind. So yesterday, I'm going to be behind. The day before, today, tomorrow. I mean, so... Call in. If you have a question, you got a comment, you got something you want to mention to me, uh, give me a call. That's what we're here for. I want to get your second opinion. Yesterday, I emphasized more reason to this for, for me to emphasize this again this morning coming out with the job numbers. Talk about that in a second. The idea that we better be planning and we better be thinking. Yesterday, there was a sense of... I said to Devin during one of the breaks yesterday, yesterday, I said, do you think there's a bit of a sense of concern right now? Because we saw the level of the callers being very consistent with fear. There was this consistency with fear coming out yesterday uh, in every caller. And I slowed down for a moment yesterday during the second hour. And I said, look, this is a time to start to rethink to really get a hold of your portfolio, your allocation models. Think thoroughly. Take some profits. I said it at the end of December. I said it at the first week of January. And I've been saying it the whole month of January. And I'm still saying it. I sent out a, a, an article about this very thing in my newsletter that will be uh, coming out this this evening after the market closes. And if you don't get it, it's an email newsletter. It comes out every Friday. It doesn't cost anything. And you can go to financialissues.org to get that newsletter. But I'm going to talk about this again, this idea of what is happening in the markets. The false positive of so many years seems to be catching up with the markets. Because I think as the Fed continues, as the Fed continues, this quantitative easing cutbacks, it is creating an atmosphere of something that should have been four years ago, but now it is creating this atmosphere is the punch bowl is being pulled away. I need to start to look at the real fundamentals, the real fundamentals of the economy, not the markets. I need to look at the markets and the earnings that have come in by companies for the last couple of years without any growth. Earnings, profitability, it's a wonderful thing. It helps the stockholders stay happy. It helps the stock price go up. It keeps the chairman of the boards happy of these companies because the, the CEOs of these companies have an obligation to the stockholders to see share value go up, and they've been doing that. It's a wonderful thing. The problem is they're doing it without growth. Not a problem for the companies because the companies are deleveraging or still some of them deleveraging, most of it's done, but deleveraging, they are streamlining their operations, maybe adding some automation and programs that have needed to be added so that they don't have to hire people. 
and they are, it is allowing them to get more productivity out of fewer people or the same amount of people without hiring. That is what's driving bottom lines. It is not the growth of the economy. And I think more and more individuals are coming to that realization, particularly those of you who listen to this program on a regular basis. And I've been talking about it's a false positive in the markets because it is not driven by growth. And, you know, good growth is far better than all the quantitative easing in the world for the long-term impact in a positive way on the economy and for individuals like you and I. So I believe that's what's driving the markets right now. People are looking and say, wow, how did we miss this? The fundamentals of the economy stink. Do you think? It's not because they've gotten bad. They've never been good. You all just have had blinders on because all you care about is making a few dollars on your stock or whatever it is, your portfolio management, whatever it is you're doing. So then today we get a jobs report out. Everybody's expecting, well, 175,000 private sector jobs, not going to be a bad number. It's not a great number, but 175,000, you know, if that's what we get, which is what we expect, uh, that'll be fine. I assume, everybody said, I assume that the December number is going to be revised upward dramatically. Remember, December was a very pathetic number of 74,000. Well, yeah, it was revised up, all right, 1,000 jobs to 75,000. Not very dramatic. Today, we get our job numbers out at 113,000. 113,000, another absolutely pathetic job. Oh, I know it's all about the weather. That nasty weather. As a matter of fact, those that missed work for the month of January as a result of weather is right in line with the average January for years past. So as bad as the weather was, it doesn't look like a whole lot of people, more than normal, missed work. But anyway, 113,000 jobs. The unemployment rate went, and this will be the headline in the, in the liberal press, hey, unemployment rate goes from 6.7% to 6.6%. Happy days. And here is another thing. The labor participation rate went up two-tenths of 1%. We're still at a 35-year low or better, <clears throat> but up. Slightly. So uh, I guess some people are going to look at that as real positive news. A 35-year low in the labor participation rate, a 30-year low, a 20-year low, a 15-year low in the labor participation rate is never, ever, ever going to be good news. Make no mistake about it. But nevertheless, the unemployment rate went down. I guess it was that huge 113,000 uh, ad of private sector jobs. I don't know. The biggest losses in retail sector, about uh, six. It was about 13,000 uh, in the retail sector. Uh, you know, the biggest spike in employment, what do you think it was? Part-time jobs. Is that a surprise to anybody? Part-time jobs. As a matter of fact, when the number came out, the Dow futures were up 40. They went down 40, 80 point swing in about two minutes after 8.30 Eastern time when the number came out. The markets aren't real happy with that, so it's going to be an interesting day on Wall Street with the numbers, that is for sure in an interesting week. But more importantly, everybody's going to have the weekend to hear all the propaganda that is going to be coming out from the liberals. And everybody's going to have an opportunity to digest these numbers. By the way, hours worked per week, per week unchanged. Again, unchanged. I feel like they've been unchanged for four years and it's probably pretty accurate. That can only continue, that can only continue as we are going to see part-time unemployment being the real driver behind any kind of jobs markets, uh, sad to say. But as more and more people realize that growth is far better than QE and the fact that we have no growth in the economy, growth comes. Why should the markets be going up? Because of QE or because of growth? See, if you and I are buying more stuff if companies are expanding at greater paces because we're buying more stuff, then people have to get hired. And that should be what is driving stock values up like it's been for the last hundred and some years. But that's not been the case. And I think the realization 
is is setting in on that. 866-300-9298. 866-300-9298. It is Rapid Fire Friday. Try to keep your question or comment um, short, pithy, and I will answer as quickly as possible so that we move on to the next call. By the way, today, today is the day that the Republicans in the House of Representatives have to muster up the votes. John Boehner, the leader of the House of Representatives, uh, has to muster up the votes. It looks like he is losing votes on immigration bill. I'm sure they'll be out. uh, The uh, Republican royalty of the Republican Party will be out talking about how bad that is. But Jack Lew, the Treasury Secretary, has warned we're not going to we're going to barely make it to the end of the no- month without a default. We're starting to hear that default word again. If the Republicans don't act now, frankly, on one part of me says these guys are just either really a lot more pathetic than I thought or they've had a chance to second think. But. When you're so pathetic and so uncaring about the future of America that you give the government another trillion dollars worth of spending like you did last month, Paul Ryan, when you do that, is it irresponsible to do that and then not increase the debt limit so that you can pay for your irresponsibility of the month before Just a thought. Now, I know when Paul Ryan and others gave the government a trillion dollars to spend last month, they certainly weren't thinking. I mean, they would think about this. They would have had to have been thinking a whole month ahead. A whole month. Can you imagine that? I mean, these are guys who can't make a decision on where to go to lunch today. But they would have had to think a whole month out. The unintended consequence of a month from now. It just drives home this whole debt ceiling debate because they all agreed to go up a trillion dollars last month. This whole debt ceiling debate drives home the incompetency, the dysfunction and the living in the bubble kind of mentality that we're dealing with in Washington. It just drives it home. Because now is not the time to think about it. The time to think about it when you were driving home, Paul Ryan, your budget to spend another trillion dollars. That's the guy that's going to be the presidential candidate who couldn't even think a month out when it comes time to raise the debt ceiling. Think about that. I know I'm getting in trouble because I got so many Paul Ryan lovers out there and I know you're going to send me your emails. Feel free to do so. I won't respond, but feel free to do so. I will read them at some point. Anyway, 866-300-9298. 866-300-9298. We're going to get right to the phones after the break. You're listening to American Family Radio Network Financial Issues. Folks, I want to remind all of you, if you are... Anywhere near Oklahoma City, come on out tonight, 6.30. I'd love to meet as many of you as possible. I'm going to be right at the front entrance of the church there, First Methodist Church of uh, Northwest Street there in Oklahoma City. I'll be at the entrance uh, uh, to, I guess it's going to be in the sanctuary. I'll be in the entrance there. Uh, Would love to uh, meet you and greet you. Come on out tonight at 6.30 for the Give Me Liberty Tour. It is something that you absolutely have to see uh, and be there and listen to. It is going to be some incredible speakers, and you are going to learn so much about America. We'll be right back after this.